enough inhumanity, enough corruption, enough insanity, and enough obstruction, enough police shooting, and enough obeying Putin, enough climate change denying, enough of our kids dying, enough of the clan, and enough of that man. This election is our democracy's last stand. Well, if you're like me, you've probably had enough. Enough of the lies, the hate mongering, corruption, and insanity. I'm Michael D'Antoine, the artist sometimes referred to as the Rockwell of the Resistance. I'm also an activist and a very, very concerned citizen. Two things I'd rather not have to be. But, unfortunately, I do, as do we all, because we're trying to survive the biggest threat to this nation we've ever had, Donald Trump. But there's some good news. We have an election coming up. If we manage to survive to November, we might be able to save our democracy, some lives, and who knows, maybe even the planet. This is no time to have a mentally challenged Tony Soprano running the country. Even more alarming is he's enabled by his sycophantic cohorts in Congress, all of whom have pretty much proven they'd be willing to sell out our democracy for a few rubles. So we will inform, entertain, and inspire, raising awareness of the dire need to vote out the heartlessly corrupt. With my paintings on institutional racism, climate change, the economy, and other important issues. We'll be joined by best-selling author and MSNBC contributor, my friend Malcolm Nance. Along with some surprise guests you might just recognize, and some wonderful videos that really tell it like it is. Hey, if we're gonna save this democracy, we're all gonna have to chip in and do our part. And that's why from now until the election, I'm offering to donate 50% of the proceeds of my art and merchandise to that cause. So, what do you say? Let's do it. Tonight's guest is a folk singer, songwriter, and activist, Peter Yarrow. As one-third of the iconic folk music trio, Peter, Paul, and Mary, he influenced a whole generation with powerful songs of love and peace. Their many hits include Puff the Magic Dragon, Leaving on a Jet Plane, and Blowing in the Wind, which they sang at Martin Luther King's 1963 March on Washington, and which Peter generously offered to sing for us here. Still going strong and fighting the good fight for justice, I'm proud to introduce Peter Yarrow. How many roads must a man walk down Before they call him a man How many seas must a white dove sail Before she sleeps in the sand How many times must the cannonballs fly Before they're forever bad The answer, my friend, is 
blowing in the wind The answer is blowing in the wind How many years must a mountain exist Before it is washed to the sea How many years can some people exist Before they're allowed to be free Isn't how many times can a man turn his head And pretend that he just doesn't see The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. How many times must a man look up before he can see, see the sky? And how many ears must one man have Before he can hear people cry How many deaths will it take till we know That too many people have died The answer, my friend, it's within all of us. It's in our hands now. We know the answers. It is in the pursuit of them that we dedicate our lives. The answer is blowing. For anybody who doesn't know it, is the great Peter Yarrow. It has to be of Peter, Paul, and Mary. And that song was one of the most iconic. He, they had a top 10 hit with that song back almost near 60 years ago. Isn't that right, Peter? It hit, it's, it, it's perhaps, I think, the most important song we ever recorded. And it hit its peak on the charts at number two the week before the March on Washington in 1963 when we sang this to a quarter of a million people who knew it because it was, it would have just hit, you know, the peak on the charts. And you can see in the, in the uh, images of the march that there, there, there's Julian Bond with his hands up in the air, you know, uh, it's a singing along in the choruses and people and so it wasn't just we who were singing it it was the it was the the the, the whole group of people and that made it everybody's it wasn't a performance it was an act of commitment and faith that's what blowing in the wind is that's what music of conscience can be and it was the first time that bob dylan was uh was heard that song brought him into the uh, broad American public awareness, and uh, it's it remains, you know, uh, an extraordinarily important uh, part of our culture. It seems more relevant today, even more relevant today than then. Um, it, it does, it does, and it also because. Whatever its its relevance is, the stakes of not getting it right today are higher than they ever were, because we never, never faced the pandemic of totalitarian regimes yeah. that we are now looking at. I mean, it's 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 not a sickness confined to Belarus, or you know, or 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 or, or North Korea, or. Everywhere, 
the fear, the, the fear is what is increased. The fear and the hatred uh, is when that increases, people look for safety from a, from a strong man. And the other crisis we're facing is what we know is going to happen with the displacement of hundreds of millions of people who are not going to be able to find it habitable to be in certain parts of the world. And what are they going to do? They're going to go to other countries. And if the other countries say, we, we want somebody to protect us, guess who it's going to be? It's going to be somebody who wants to be, you know, a, a tyrant. Because they'll take that power and they'll play on the fear and they'll divide the people, which is what is happening here. We are divided and a lot of it is artificial and planned. Because if we are divided, we can't stand together for a moral issue. Thank goodness the great news is that we've stood together for the first time in decades for, for, for the end to racism. It's the first time the United States in decades has said across the boundaries. I mean, they, there, is, there is the reality when you reach a certain bottom line in a human being, they've got to make a choice. We have to make a choice right now because if we want to be ruled by fear in this world, we go one way. If we want to be ruled by love, we go the other. That's the choice we're making. Well, it's interesting that, that we're making such progress with racism. Um, and that the same, but the same group of people, uh, we're not, they, they see through the racism finally, but they're not seeing through, through Trumpism. I, I, th I think, frankly, that you'd find that no people who are uh, demonstrating for Black Lives Matter, Matter are diehard Trumpers. They may be Republicans, but frankly, that it's totally incompatible with everything he's saying. I mean, he's whistleblowing like, I mean, uh, uh, he's dog whistling like crazy now, you know, with his, his, his racist remarks, we're going to keep them out of the suburbs. Who are you talking about? Are you talking about uh, um, stockbrokers? Is a hedge fund? <laughs> is that who you want to keep out? <laughs> if that's the case, you know, we've got to change the language, right? Hello, I'm Ryder Cooley. Welcome back to week two of Democracy's Last Stand Art Auction. Remember that 50% of the auction proceeds will go toward helping the Democratic Party beat Trump in the upcoming election. And an additional percentage will go toward supporting racial justice organizations. Our first painting is Beacon of Hope. It is a six foot by four foot hand framed oil on canvas painting about the renowned folk musician, environmentalist and activist, Pete Seeger. In the painting, Seeger is playing his famous banjo alongside the Hudson River. The painting entitled Beacon of Hope is an homage to Seeger who lived in Beacon, New York and was a profound inspiration to the artist. The painting is in a handmade frame fashioned after driftwood with some of Seeger's original lyrics carved into the wood. Pete Seeger, a friend of the artist, was so fond of this painting that he signed his name on the frame. Hi. Well, thank you for joining us on the second episode. I know there was a a pretty bad day there uh, with the internet, uh, obviously Russian hack hacking. So um, I apologize for that. Um, we should call this episode A Tale of Two Peters because um, there are two icons, a very lucky man that uh, both Peters I got to know. And I have to say in both cases, the men were even greater than their legends. And that's a thing. Pete, Peter, um, Peter Sear, he lived in my uh, in my town, or I lived in his town, more likely, and uh, more accurately. And when he passed. He he actually was very fond of the painting, and um, we made posters for the for the sloop club and and uh, for the to clean up the Hudson River. 
and uh, I gave Pete the painting, the poster, and he um, he had no problem with the way he looked. He was very happy with that. But he complained about the size of the mountains. He knew what mountain was which. He told me in the poster, if you don't mind, because we made a poster to raise funds, uh, put a, put a um, train in there by the mountain and make that mountain about 10,000 feet small, smaller and we're okay. And I did that. And I says, uh, Pete, you know, you're, you're, you're changing my art. How would you like it if uh, I changed your music? I mean, what if I, if I told you to say, uh, if I had a, if I had a, a screwdriver and, um, uh, luckily after course, he laughed. Uh, so that's everybody loved Pete in our town. When he, when he passed, we put posters on every, uh, every storefront in town. And it took me all day to do that because everybody had to share a story with just how great that man was to them personally. So, uh, it's a, it's a great thing to have known him. And um, and now to Peter Yarrow, he's uh, not only an icon of the 60s, he's still working hard today, fighting the good fight for justice. And he's doing it with the youth. Uh, and that right now we're going to hear a song. And the song they're going to sing is The Sin of Silence. Some see my skin as a weapon, they're threatened by the way I'm made. Even my friends downplay the danger, stay quiet like they don't care. Don't they know next time they watch the news, my face? Our voice. 
voices till we drown out the hate. The arts, Michael, your painting, these songs, and these kids' songs, which you just from say, well, they used to be they, yeah, and now look at this. You brought and this back. is the language of today speaking out in the way that Peter Paul and Mary and Bob Dylan and Joan Baez and Judy Collins did when we went, you know, we were at the marches on Washington, Selma Montgomery, and, and, and th that's what we need today. But money again, close down that opening for uh, the music business to embrace that. It became so commodified and so uh, money-oriented that it was just, they, they are, they're not looking for the next Bob Dylans. They're looking for, you know, the biggest sales. And that Bob Dylan's not going to start by making, Bob Dylan made, uh, you know, a number of albums and then it happened, you know, and that happens to a lot. But they're not going to invest that time. No. What do they want to sell? They want to sell, um, you know, fast food. And it's all the bottom line. It's all the next quarter's profit. That is why what, this is a way to get around it. Because if we can use the net and today's tools, we don't need their money. That's what, what I we think. need is people to be moved. Right. And the arts do that. And that's, that's why we, you and I are in the same boat, my brother. Well, you know, you, you, I had all these questions prepared and uh, amazingly, you've answered them <laughs> without me asking them. I was going to ask you, well, the, the questions I had was, um, you know, the difference between the protests in the 60s and the ones today. How are, they, how is it, how are things the same and how are things different? What could we learn from, from everything well, you've done and gone through? Well, what we have to say is that the vehicles for mobilizing have shut down. So we have to use today's tools. Mm -hmm. We have to know that also people have been programmed. Look, education. What did they eliminate? The creative arts. The, 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 same, the same kind of infusion of the heart that we would experience when we were growing up with music and the art. And that's not... That, that's been, that was eliminated to a large degree uh, across the nation. As we said, it's all about money and 20th century skills. It's not. It's, it's about heart. We don't have an absence of skills in this United States. We have an absence of empathy. We have an absence of, 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 of compassion. And these, these efforts that we had ran on love yes martin luther king what did he say to 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 those young people who went and got themselves beaten up and lacerated and bones broken when they went into lunch and sit at the lunch counters he said they'll come after you and they'll beat you and then what do you do you love them and then the next wave will come yeah. and what they'll beat you up and then what do you do? You love them. You, and the next wave will come, and then you win. And then they give up. And that's what happened. And, and what, it doesn't mean that you love what they're doing. Right, no. It means that you don't allow yourself to be complicit in the hatred. That you, that you, you somehow see, I mean, 
uh, you know, it's hard, but that's what the Dalai Lama said. Here's a song that um, that uh, I, I wrote. Uh, actually, I was asked to write a song uh, that uh, personified, you know, using his, his poem, and I'll find my capo and then I'll sing it to you. Hang on. Never give up, no matter the pain and sorrow. Never give up, you'll find your tomorrow. Compassionate heart, it will lead you, your loving heart. It will free you and you'll never give up. Never give up. Love everyone, love all strangers, love even your enemy. Love everyone, and everyone will join you to work for peace. To work for peace Never give up No matter the pain and sorrow Never give up You'll find your tomorrow That's beautiful, that's beautiful So that's the poem by the Dalai Lama that I set to music, and I was commissioned to do this by in, in Japan, and then I met him in Japan, and he gave me a an amazing. We had an amazing time. We met, and I, he, I, I, I wanted to say Your Holiness, but in the he was speaking to the students, and he said, I don't want to be called Your Holiness anymore. I'm just, I'm resigning from the position of the leadership. Of, you know, uh, uh, so I want to. I'm just a simple country priest. So I didn't want to call. So I said, I looked, went on, and I said, my brother. He said, my brother. Let's rub noses. You don't make this stuff up. And we rub noses, and he said, now we touch foreheads. We touch foreheads, and then we talked, and then I sang the song, and uh, I'll I'll send you a picture that you can wow. use. Yeah. Uh, 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 to to. to uh, uh, as as part of this broadcast of me and the Dalai Lama, so essentially, what we're looking at with the arts are going to be very important in terms of this nation's healing. Michael, we're going to need to uh, we're absolutely going to need to be uh, finding a way to open on each other uh, our hearts to each other. So you and I are going to have our Work cut out for us. Our next painted illegal immigration. It is a 35 by 56 inch oil on canvas painting and points a finger at the history of immigration in America. Behind the back of a friendly looking pilgrim, there is a hidden rifle. The pilgrims smile and wave from the deck of their ship while a family of unarmed Native Americans stand on the shore. Michael created this piece as a reminder to those who demonize undocumented immigrants that most of our ancestors were undocumented immigrants guilty of invasion and genocide across America. Well, Trump has demonized just about every group, with the possible exception of white supremacists and a couple of Russians we know. Um, and that this painting here is um, is about exactly the fact that we're all immigrants, with the exception of the Native Americans. And uh, so, therefore, we should really question uh, why we're so concerned. Some people are so concerned about uh, immigrants. I mean, they're, the, they're what made America great in the first place. Uh, so just think about your ancestors, who they were, where they came from. And, uh, and this, as this painting shows, 
that, uh, well, maybe we aren't so friendly and maybe the people who came here first um, were, were a danger to indigenous people. Maybe that's what they're afraid of. But you have to look at yourself before you judge others. Um, so black, red, white, yellow. Uh, the only color of skin I'm not too fond of is orange, which brings me to that orange clown. And it also brings me to a video, a music video that I did myself. Here it is, the orange clown. I had a friend named John who fell for a con by a guy named Don. Had no idea he was putting him on. He voted for that orange clown. John watched Fox News all day long till he couldn't tell right from wrong. He hates folks he thinks don't belong. But John still loved his orange clown. That orange clown will bring you down. It's the fan, he will be found. He'll pass the buck at the speed of sound. That orange cloud will bring you down. Lots of people are out of work, so you might think it is berserk giving corporations all the perks. It's a rather cunning clown. Things go wrong, he takes no blame, they can't explain why he feels no shame. Doctors all say he is insane, but John still loved his orange clown. That orange clown will bring you down. When he hits the fan, he will be found. He'll pass the buck at the speed of sound. That orange clown. John believed all his lies, he couldn't see reason, don't know why, don't matter that so many had died, he still loved his orange clown. The clown wants to use this catastrophe to stop folks from voting school democracy, but John couldn't see the hypocrisy of that crooked, no good orange clown. That orange clown will bring you down. When he hits the fan, he won't be found. He'll pass the buck at the speed of sound. That orange cloud will bring you down. I warn John not to heed that man. He speaks of things you don't understand. Stay home, stay safe, the best you can. John obeyed that orange cloud. Caught the virus, then he got worse. He lost his insurance and his nurse. He saw John depart in a hearse. That orange clown brought poor John down. That orange clown brought poor John down. When he hit the van, his plans weren't sound. Now poor old John is buried in the ground. That orange clown. Brought poor John down. That orange clown brought poor John down. That orange clown will bring us down. I know that, and look, and we also should be, uh, to the degree possible, bringing the young people into the uh, into the into the arena, because oh, we're not we're, 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 we can be helpful, we but we can't lead this. We can do everything we can. We have to. Uh, uh, we 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 can be they're doing what we can but it has to be handed over so that everything we know and everything we feel is not gone and they, they don't have to reinvent this stuff from the uh, you know from the ground up 
this is that we stand on the shoulders of people that we inherited this from, and now we have to convey all that. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Well, it reminds me of, of our mutual friend Pete Seeger that um, when they tried to shut him down and censor him, uh, with they they blackballed, uh, blacklisted him, right? And, they, they, yes, he, he was brought up before the House on american Activities Committee. He right. refused to use the Fifth Amendment to say, I'm not going to answer because it will incriminate me. Use the First Amendment, which did not protect him, and then he was sentenced to a year in jail, which he did not ultimately serve. But he knew that he would be more vulnerable, but he insisted on saying, you do not have the right to ask me this question. So since and he that, couldn't be on TV, and they figured they shut him down. I mean, he he went to schools and just like little schools and locally saying- No, he went to summer camps was the most camps, important place. Okay. And there, they, they, he, they, 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 it was the greatest thing that ever happened because there, are, there were thousands of kids uh -huh. who got that message of humanity it had nothing to do with communism or not. It had to do with equity and fairness and justice and freedom. And I'm one of those kids. Is that right? Because yes, I, I'm one I, of the whole hippie generation. I hope peace and love and fairness and right. Well, that way, Pete Seeger was our mentor, our role model. Our he was the one that showed us how to live. The, the the way you do you do you your art is dedicated to creating community and creating expressions of 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 affirmation and and an opposition to the things that are immoral you loving person doesn't mean that you accept immorality unfairness cruelty and and and, and, and an absence of humanity it just means that you don't add to the hatred okay. because adding to the hatred intensifies the cycle. So it, that's very hard. I mean, you, 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 it's okay if you despise yeah. an act, yeah. but you know, to We're focus- We're to have to come together at some point. Yeah. Right? That's, that's and true. don't we all bottom line want the same thing? You know, our families to be safe and happy and- That's no longer true. There are some people who are sick and don't care. They don't care. What they want is money and they will sacrifice their families, their honor, their names, their humanity, their morality for it. No. Do they, did, did Donald Trump care about the pandemic in New York? No, let it kill him. They're not voting for me. Does it surprise you that, not, say Mitt Romney, not one Republican Oh, it, 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 well, it surprised me. Best interest. It's not a, a surprise. It's a horror. Yeah. It's a, so I say it's a cult. This is not. This is the loss of one's ethical soul. Is is not that is surprising? Yes, to have thirty forty percent of this country having now, with all due respect. If you go to North Korea, yeah. you talk to the people who pray to, you know, Kim Jong Un, three four times a day, and they've they've have the syndrome that has been recently uh, described by Donald Trump's niece called learned. Uh, um, uh, hang on, let me think. Okay, by Donald Trump's niece called learned helplessness oh yeah yeah you 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 just know that you have no option and your your will you know so you can't you're not going to hate those people okay you know the people who've been watching who've been uh, you're gonna it's just like jonestown you don't hate the people from jonestown who took their lives you know, and that's a lot of these people. There are skinheads and and uh, Aryan Nation folks who have broken free, and they'll tell you what it is. 
and, they, and they're on the other side now. And when you do that, if you have that vision, you understand that those people who embrace this have, have been, it's, it's like they, they've been abused and they've responded to the abuse that way. It's like a child soldier. How does that happen that a child takes a weapon and kills people? Do you hate that person? I mean, you have to, if you, if you have a, a broad perspective of it, it's hard, you hate the action. But, you know, these, the, 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 these are sick realities. Sociopathology will create these kinds of human beings and they exist in every country now and in America. We thought we were somewhat immune to it, but we're not because we have this, this, this funnel of information from Fox News you watch that every day, you're going to be a Trump supporter. I've seen it happen. It's like a zombie movie, watching people. And I, I, I watch it, and I'm telling you, you know, if that's all you're watching, boy, you know, and you that's wonder if these so people come up and they, and they, how Mitch McConnell, who knows, he knows better. He knows, you know, Marco Rubio, and, and, and you know, how these people who Donald Trump has humiliated. And now that they they're licking his boots, what is going on? And and what he's doing now? What look at Portland, br bringing out the the, the stormtroopers? Can you believe it? You know what 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 he wants is is to see conflict. He wants police shooting at the national guard. And then he can declare a state of national emergency. How do we break that disillusionment? How do we break the spell Trump has over over the masses? Well, the, the, what we have to do is we have to win this election first, or yeah. otherwise we're not going to break any spell. Yeah. We're going to be we're going to be toast. I, I, yeah. So anybody watching this, don't don't think that the chances of our surviving on any level. If Trump wins again, you know, whether it's climate crisis, whether it's losing our democracy, it ain't going to happen. Once we've done that, then we have to rebuild with love. And we have to rebuild with those kids that you saw in those two songs. Yeah. We have to let them go out and spread the message and we have to educate this next generation so that we insulate them from becoming pawns in the hands of demagogues. That's what we have to do. And we have to include that in education. And I don't care how well you've done in, in, in advanced uh, calculus, as much as I do, whether you're a moral human being, and we've taught you in such a way that your systems know how to have resilience in terms of this cruelty and evil that, that would defeat everything that's important about life. Absolutely. Peter, I, I've learned a lot today. I, I really, from you. I mean, I really have. And um, I thank you so much for doing this. Well, I learned from you. And I want, I, I want to send you the picture of me and Dalai Lama. And I want to go out with a, a bit of a song that goes to the heart. Because the, most, the answer, my friend, is compassion, caring, empathy. If we have that, we'll have the answer. How many times will a man look up before he can see the sky? Do you know? How many times can pretend you don't see? If you have compassion, if you have empathy, you're, that's, that's your tool. How many, uh, how many times, how many ears must one man have before he can hear people cry? Compassion. I'm a little boy with glasses, the one they call a geek, a little girl who never smiles. Cause I got braces on my teeth And I know how it feels To cry myself to sleep I'm the kid on every playground The 
it's always chosen last. I'm a single teenage mother trying to overcome my past. You don't have to be my friend, but is it too much to ask? Don't laugh at me. Don't call me names. Don't get your pleasure from my pain. In God's eyes, we're all the same. Someday we'll all have perfect wings. Don't laugh at me. I'm fat. I'm thin. I'm short. I'm tall. I'm deaf. I'm blind. Hey, aren't we all? I'm black, I'm white, and I am brown. I'm Jewish, I'm Catholic. I'm Muslim, I'm Buddhist. Born in Sarajevo, I was born in Kosovo. Born in Northern Ireland, born in Africa. I'm Hutu. I'm Tutsi. I'm gay. I'm lesbian. I'm American Indian. I'm very young. I'm very aged. I'm very wealthy. I'm very poor. Don't laugh at me. Please be my friend. Please be my friend. Please accept me just the way I am. No one should be left out. We all should be included. Someday we'll all have perfect wings, but we are far from perfect now. So don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at me. Don't call me names. Don't get your pleasure from my pain. In God's eyes, we're all the same someday. We'll all have perfect wings. Don't laugh at me, my country. Tis of thee, sweet land of liberty. It is to thee that I sing this song. That's that's amazing. Is that a new song? No, that's the same person that mentored those kids who wrote "The Children Will Show the Way." Wrote that with his singing partner. His name is Steve Seskin. Oh, that's excellent. You know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of your song "Left Field." Didn't you do a song? I'm in left field. Right field, and I didn't. Right I didn't write it. No. Lefty, so and I Noel did. used to sing it, and it's it's charming, but it has much less. Power and meaning than any of the other things I've been singing for you. Oh yeah, I know, but it just yeah. kind of reminded me. And well, thank you again. This yeah. um, this has basically um, been a, a major honor and help, and I hope a lot of people are going to see this. Our next painting for this is Titan Pie. It is a 66 by 44 inch oil on canvas painting about financial monopolization, political corruption, and greed in America. The painting depicts a rotund businessman or perhaps a politician dressed in red and white and blue and eating a piece of American pie. And various ominous corporations frame the scene with the hands of desperate people grabbing for the money which is out of their reach. That painting was done, American Eye, uh, about uh, early 2009, when we were forced to uh, bail out the very Wall Street fat cats that uh, left us in economic ruin. And uh, we were left with the crumbs. We were left to pay the bill. They took the risk, we pay the bill. It's an old story and it's getting older. So um, basically, uh, it's trickle-down economics. That is a portrait of trickle-down economics, plain and simple. 
and it, it's not getting better. I, I'm sure my pillow guy today and uh, the ph big farmer are getting a lot of funds, making a lot more money than all the unemployed people that are left um, left broke, basically broke. So uh, the money goes to the top, and that's what this painting is about. painting for the evening is titled Mixed Messages. It is a 46 by 42 inch oil on canvas painting about discrimination and trickle down economics. American Pie was painted shortly after the 2009 Wall Street bailouts and economic collapse in America and continues to bear relevance today. A young impressionable boy dressed in red, white, and blue stands with his dog while reading slogans and posters of political and discriminatory propaganda. This painting suggests future generations of hatred in America if the current political administration is not changed. Well, I think it's sad that we used to have messages of peace and love, and, um, and and what you can do for your country. And now it's, we have messages, uh, today's youth, what are they hearing from Trump? Grab them? I mean, you see the, the images on the painting there and um, it's all pretty negative. And what kind of psychological effect is that gonna have on the future generations? And a sociological effect. And that's what we got with number 45. The damage that he's doing now it's going to last for years. We're, we're not sure yet just how much damage it is going to be. And that's why it's so important to vote and vote blue. Well, that pretty much concludes tonight. I want to thank Peter Yarrow. Tremendously want to thank Peter Yarrow. He, the man is a, is a fantastic human being and you should, you should research his music. Um, <clears throat> now, next week, we're going to have Torre uh, and we're going to have Elie Mistal. MSNBC contributor and uh, someone who you'll see is going to be your favorite lawyer. Okay, so please tune in next week at this time. I promise we're going to do it on time.